Okay, students. So I hope you took a good day off and completed all the exercises which were required out of you, and you went through the different stages of mitosis or the equational cell division. By now, you know that mitosis has four main subphases: prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. But the purpose of today's video is to talk of three to four some very basic points, uh, which most of the times, because these topics are so new and so overwhelming, students tend to commit some very silly mistakes during the diagrammatic practice while drawing the diagrams in the exams, or while attempting the difference of mitosis between the plant cells and the animal cells. So I'm going to approach that that uh, in this video. step by step and then we are going to talk about cytokinesis what is cytokinesis what is its relevance and again how it differentiates um for plant as well as animal cells the mechanisms are different okay so the first key point is that whether it is a plant cell or an animal cell please remember that the four stages are the same prophase metaphase anaphase telophase the key points of the four stages are also a lot similar which means that during prophase what will you see by the beginning of prophase the cell material is uh, there all the organelles are there of course um, the nuclear material is lying in the form of the thread like chromatin uh, all the cell organelles are there like the golgi er etc etc um now by late prophase what you will see that the nuclear envelope has begin to dissolve or it is like almost gone centrosomes appear right towards the poles of the cell and of course they are beginning to release their spindle fibers their spindle rays the microtubular rays and now the chromatin is condensed in the form of chromosomes now and of course the chromosomes are attached to the spindle rays or the spindle fibers which are the microtubular rays released from the centrioles of the centrosomes at the centromeres right so this has happened during prophase and when you uh, like enter metaphase you know all the centromeres all the chromosomes are aligned at the center of the cell at this imaginary equatorial plate or metaphasic plate and uh, of course by the time anaphase begins the chromosomes are split at the centromeres and they are now moving towards the opposite poles of the cells right and how are they moving their centromeres are towards the centrosomes whereas the chromatid arms are thrown back right and meanwhile the last stage appears that is the telophase now you see that by telophase appears now the centrosomes with the centrioles will begin to diminish begin to vanish many organelles which had earlier diminished they will start reappearing and of course the nuclear envelope around the new daughter nuclei will be formed and the two daughter nuclei will be segregated now. Now, what I am trying to attempt by today's uh, classes, to first of all tell you the diagrammatic difference. These four stages are going to be the same, but there are some very delicate, some very fine differences which a student of biology must know. First of all, when you are drawing up an animal cell, so the cells remember don't have cell walls, so the shape of the cells has to be very different. Animal cells are not drawn rigid. right whereas plant cells have a definite form and structure a bit elongated or a bit isodiametric plus you remember plant cells have cell walls guys so you have to draw the double layered structure right so the shapes of the cells when you are talking of mitosis in animal cells and plant cells please notice the difference of shapes number 2 animal cells have the centrosomes with the centrioles right these cell organelles which are supposed to form the spindle fibers are there and a very important structure is formed that when the centrioles they start forming and releasing the spindle fibers many small rays of the microtubules are formed so the centrioles along with these rays they form structures called the asters and these small microtubular fibers which are not joining end to end with the opposite poles they are called the aster rays so the development of the aster and the aster rays 
the presence of the centrosomes having the centrioles is a classic feature of the animal cell so they have to be drawn they have to be shown however plant cells do not have centrosomes and centrioles right so you do not draw any structure towards the opposite poles but then the point is for mitosis to begin and for the chromosomes to separate the centromeres of the chromosomes the kinetochores they must attach to the spindle fibers of the spindle rays so the spindle fibers have to be formed plant cells also have spindle fibers but they lack the centrioles they lack the centrioles so please do not draw any centrioles when you are talking of mitosis in a plant cell right another thing the next feasible question is that okay if there are no centrioles how are we getting the spindle fiber structure this entire spindle of microtubular rays in a plant cell well the origin is a bit different so in the cytoplasm near the nuclear membrane there is a centrosome region remember the nucleus the nucleus has a double membrane structure right so the outer nuclear envelope has a centrosomic structure these are the cytoplasmic centrosomes and they help in the formation of the spindle fibers in case of a plant cell so special cell organelles are missing so the origin is very different so do not draw centros centrioles in plant cells right and another thing which goes common for both the kind of cells is if you have started with a common number of chromosomes by late prophase if you are drawing let's say four chromosomes this means throughout the other three two stages that is metaphase and anaphase your chromosome number has to remain four only it suddenly cannot become five or number of chromosomes well we are not splitting them for the rv <laughs> so five cannot become 2.5 or 2.5 so this is some common sense rules these are some common sense rules you need to apply right so the number of chromosomes so for example in late prophase you drew four chromosomes in metaphase also there are four right in anaphase again you are showing the splitting of four chromosomes at the centromeres right so please remember you cannot change the chromosome number at your own whim and fancy or out of just a careless mistake be very careful of that also please ensure that while you draw the chromosomes you show their attachment to the spindle fibers at the centromere you know not at the chromatid arms so i've tried to point the centrosome with the centrioles and the spindle tubular rays joining at the centromere of the chromosome please ensure these common things so i hope these are some points you'll keep in mind and remember as soon as classes begin we will be starting our practicals and there's a beautiful practical about getting the different mitotic stages in plant cells and we'll be having the onion root tip cells remember do not draw these diagrams these are mitotic stages of the animal cell so this was just my way of you know kind of comparing it for you i created these diagrams for your relevance of course they are not that beautifully drawn but uh however i think it solves the purpose the next important part is okay telophase has progressed the nuclei the daughter nuclei have been formed so over here in my figures n stands for nucleus n1 is of course the nucleus of the first daughter cell uh, and n2 is the nucleus of the second daughter cell and dc means daughter cell so i hope these simple uh, abbreviations are understandable to you all now cytokinesis so once the nuclei are separated so karyokinesis has happened now the next step is the division of the cytoplasm or the cells so ultimately from the mother cell two daughter cells the two daughter cells are not just equal to one another for the nuclear and cytoplasmic material but also equal to the mother cell or the parent cell that is mitosis if you remember now just look at these comparative diagrams just divide this page into two halves so first we are going to talk about the cytokinesis in a typical animal cell right in animal cells again i have maintained the same key you know i have drawn a very so instead of drawing the diagrams uh, elongated i have just took you know taken them down a bit horizontal 
to uh, you know save some space so cytokinesis begins with the formation of a contractile ring at the center and this ring is present just beneath the plasma membrane or the cell membrane of the cells all the cells it is basically made up of you know proteins like actins and myosin and it assembles and makes its appearance during anaphase it starts to begin its appearance during anaphase and by the time the cell has entered telophase now the contractile ring is prevalent at the center of the cell right as the name indicates it's a ring it's a loop like structure of different proteins contractile it will contract so what will it do it will push the cell from outside to inside it's like forming a furrow it is like pinching the cells off from one another so there is a cleavage furrow cleavage is basically this thing this is the cleavage this is the cleavage so the ring contracts and ultimately the two daughter cells their seroplasms they separate off right this is the scheme of the cytokinesis of a typical animal cell most of the times but what do we do about the plant cells plant cells again are very rigid structures with rigid cell walls right so of course a simple contractile ring pulling the cell inwards and causing the furrow is not going to be an effective strategy so what do we have in place of that we have a specific structure called the cell plate so the cell plate is a special structure formed which is formed from towards the center of the cell towards the outer sides so contractile ring operates in a different direction it will contract from outside towards inside from outside towards inside but the cell plate formation happens from the inside towards the outside okay you can see the movement of my cursor hopefully right okay sorry i misplaced and ultimately the plant cells are separated from each other subsequently by the formation of new cell walls or independent cell walls now what is the basic structure which gives rise to the cell plate it is called the phragmoplast okay it is called the phragmoplast so the phragmoplast acts like a scaffold as a template you know as a basic structure for the entire cell plate assembly to be formed ultimately while the cell plate is laid from the middle of the cell towards the outer edges the independent cell walls of the two new daughter cells are also formed and ultimately the cells are separate so please keep in mind that the cytokinesis schemes of a typical animal and plant cell are very variable and i'm sure now when you read this text from the ncert all these keywords will make more sense to you so remember the keywords contractile ring and furrow in the animal cells cell plate and phragmoplast in the plant cells and of course they have mentioned that um the cell plate actually represents the middle lamella right um and recall we have discussed that the middle lamella is made up of calcium and pectate and pectin substances we have already discussed that in the previous chapter that is cell and that brings us to the last topic which is significance of mitosis what is the importance and relevance of this equational division so your ncrd mentions some very crux points which is which is this that these cells these uh, you know cells which are to undergo equational division you know equal division of the nuclear and cytoplasmic material between the daughter cells as well as the parent cell these are diploid cells mostly however there are certain insects and certain lower plants where the main plant body is haploid itself so over there also mitosis will happen but what is the importance of mitosis mitosis helps in growth in repair for example there is injury and cells become damaged so which process will ensure that new cells are formed mitosis of course also it is very important that it maintains a good cell ratio the there's a term called the nucleocytoplasmic ratio so 
is also called the karyoplasmic ratio. So split the words, karyo from nuclei, plasmic from cytoplasm. So it is basically the ratio in between the nuclear content and the cytoplasmic content. So the question is, how does mitosis help in maintaining this karyoplasmic or you know, nucleocytoplasmic uh, ratio? So essentially, we all know that, you know, multicellular organisms, you know, organisms which are made up of multiple cells, they are growing in height, in weight, in measurement during different stages of, you know, uh, juvenility and then, you know, to going towards the reproductive phase and maturity. This growth is because of mitosis, the equational division, right? Now, Many cell functions are controlled by the nuclear content or the nucleus, right? So the size of the nucleus is not going to change. But as a result of cell growth and, you know, uh, cell elongation, the cytoplasm, it increases. So because of this, the nucleocytoplasmic ratio, it stands disturbed. So what does mitosis do? Via cell division, it will restore back this disturbed ratio back to the accepted levels, right? So, um, yeah, go ahead in the comment section, tell me the exact definition for the nucleoplasmic ratio. Is it the same as karyoplasmic ratio? Um, how do you think in some other way it helps in maintaining the, um, you know, how mitosis is helping in maintenance for the same? Please go ahead and give me some very creative answers, right? So another important function is cell repair, right? So I've already mentioned that in routine life, in day-to-day -day activities, many organisms, they lose a lot of cells to growth, injuries, infections, um, environmental stresses. So how are those cells constantly um, replaced? Of course, by cell division, which is mitosis. So which cells are constantly being lost? Your skin cells, the cells of the epidermis, for example. Then the inner lining of the gut, of the digestive tract, of the um, urogenital tract. Then there are the blood cells, which are constantly being replaced. RBCs, white blood cells, etc. So this is of key significance, cell growth. So the growth of organisms is dependent upon mitosis. Repair work, mitosis. Of course, the, the maintenance of the karyoplasmic ratio, again mitosis. And in plants, uh, mitosis has a special significance because in the active uh, regions, in the regions or zones of cell active or cell, uh, you know, better way of saying that would be regions of active cell divisions where the cells are constantly dividing. These would be the root tips, the shoot tips, that is the root apices, the shoot apices, and some lateral cells, like the lateral cambium as well. And we will be talking more about that in the coming classes. So tell me in the comments, what do you mean by apical meristems, lateral meristems, cambium, right? And this ensures that when cells are actively dividing, there's continuous growth in plants throughout their life. So I need to know if plants are growing continuous throughout their lifetime, why don't we see trees which are gigantic, like, you know, really tall? So is that something to do with the rate of growth or something? So do let me know in the comment section below. And I'm hopeful that, you know, you have practiced the diagrams for mitosis, the division, the distinction between, you know, plant and animal cells and how they undergo mitosis is also clear to you. And soon we will be discussing meiosis and hopefully, uh, yeah, we'll be talking about the reductional division soon and how it is very variable from equational division. Thank you so much. Enjoy your weekend and see you all soon.